Hello and welcome back. This week we will be talking about chapter one, the purpose and use of financial statements. I am using the course slides uh, for our textbook by Kimmel, Winget, Mitchell, Trenholm, Irvine, and Burnley. Uh, fun fact, Irvine was my prof at U Calgary a few many years ago. This is the ninth edition. We thank Debbie Musel uh, for creating these slides and I edited the crap out of them. So, um, and when I mean edited, I, I mean like taking some extra words, moving things around, adding in some examples, uh, but really the foundation uh, is attributed to the book slides. Uh, and I, I do this on purpose because I want you to have a consistency between the language in your book and the language in your mini lecture slides. Uh, that is also the same language that you will see in your adaptive practice, the same language you will see in your problems and solutions, your live Q&A, as well as your mini tests. Okay, our learning objectives for this week are to identify the uses and users of accounting, Describe the primary forms of business organization and describe the purpose and content of each of the financial statements. You'll notice in the chapter, me, the syllabus, which I'll bring up right now, that this is our week this week, this is the chapter we're covering, the intro within the chapter, and then these are the pages. I know like we are normally used to seeing pages one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, instead they have like page sections. So these page sections will correspond to the learning objectives that I'll be covering in my mini lecture videos. And we'll see that it's one to 1.2, which actually covers learning objectives one and two. We then have a break between one, uh, three and one five. And then the last bit of the course, for this week is learning objective four, which is in 116 to 1130. Clear as mud? All right, moving on. Today, in this video, we'll be talking about identifying the uses and users of accounting. In the next videos, you'll see the other two learning objectives. All righty. The uses and users of accounting. Accounting, what we're doing here is we are capturing economic events, economic events that happened and we're gonna capture them and put them into debits and credits, which will then translate into financial statements. And those financial statements will tell the story of where the company went and where they were and give us indications of where the future, where the future story of this com uh, company could be going. So when we talk about users, we're really talking about either internal users, internal to the company, as well as external users. And when we're looking at internal users, that's anybody that is kind of employed by the company. It could be the, the managers, it could be the um, CFOs, CEOs, it could be the frontline employees, it could be your accounts payable person, it could be your warehouse manager. They're anybody that is employed by the organization. Uh, the organizations can be really any organization. They can be for-profit companies, non-profit companies, or government organizations. And then when we talk about external users, I literally think of anybody that is not internal to the company. So anybody that's not employed directly or indirectly. These are people that are investing in the company or future investors. Uh, customers are also external users. Uh, taxing authorities like the Canada Revenue Agency, the CRA, as well as regulators. So internal or external. Let's look at an example. So I want you to read this and then pause the video and see if you can answer this question. So for discussion question number one, let's identify the internal and external users of financial information for a local hospital. All right, so some internal examples could include the hospital's human resources department, they could include the x-ray technician, the chief financial officer of the hospital, departmental managers, uh, it could include, 
oh, who else? The doctors, the nurses, uh, the ambulance drivers. Would it include the patients? No. Patients are effectively clients of the hospital, although I don't think we'd really call them clients or customers in Canada, we would call them patients. And those would be examples of external users. So they're external to the organization, meaning they're not employed by the organization. So some other external examples could include the nurses union. So the external union that kind of helps the nurses to negotiate the contracts. It could be the provincial government, uh, the funders of the hospital, as well as the provincial taxation department, um, because some of the services uh, may be exempt or may not be exempt from taxes. So when thinking about the organization and what is internal and external, it's not just physically, you know, do they have an office or are they physically inside or the primary place of business or primary you know, place of operations? No. It is, what is this organization? What is their role? And is that user internal to that organization or role helping them operate? Or are they external, having an external influence? So, you know, I bring up that example of the patient so that you can be like, oh, okay, that's an example of somebody that might spend a lot of time in that organization physically, but not be an internal user. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate your attention and I will see you in the next one.